Hi, I'm Tara. I'm 50 years old. I live in New York and I recently went on a weight loss journey and lost over 100 pounds with the help of um, weight loss injectables. First Saxenda, then Wagovia, and now I'm using a compounded semeglutide from a compound pharmacy through a company called Iveem. There's been a lot of talk on these uh, interwebs about the safety and whether or not compound pharmacies are safe that are making semeglutide. And while I know that it's hard to decipher what's real and what isn't because there's so much conflicting information, I implore you to do your research. That's the best way to get to your answers, but I'm gonna explain it to the best of my abilities. Um, I'm gonna explain why it's legal and why it's safe to the best of my non-doctor abilities. Keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I'm just going off of what I've researched, what I've been told. Um, you know, different things like that that I've learned along the way. So a couple of doctors are showing a statement that Novo released. That's the company that originally made semeglutide. They're saying that these compound pharmacies aren't legit because they didn't release the ingredients of their semaglutide to these compound pharmacies. Therefore, these compound pharmacies cannot be making a compounded version of semaglutide. First, you need to know compound pharmacies have been around forever. Doctors often send prescriptions to personalize at compound pharmacies for various reasons. A patient might have an allergy to a component of a medication that they need, etc. That being said, as far as Novo releasing the semeglutide to the compound pharmacies to use, it doesn't work that way. And if you look at my TikTok, I'm going to link a nurse who understands and explains it much better than I do. Uh, so I, I, I really encourage you to go and watch her videos because she will do a much better job of explaining it. But it, as to the best of my knowledge, it does not work that way. Semeglutide is created with ingredients. Let's think of it as a recipe because that's what medication is. Medication is a recipe. For those of us who aren't scientists, it's the best way I could describe it. That recipe includes multiple ingredients. Now, I may have a bread recipe and you may have a bread recipe and they may have the same ingredients. They may have some slightly different ingredients, but they're still bread. Both are bread. Both taste good, both feel good, both are healthy for you. Well, bread's not healthy, but do you know what I mean? Well, not that it's unhealthy, but anyway, I digress. Bread is safe. In the, it's not gonna poison you, okay? Bread is not gonna poison you. It may make you fat, but it won't poison you, right? So. That's why we're using bread as an example. Now, I can't, I can copyright my recipe, right? But other people can use it and other people can adapt it and other people can even publish it. And to the best of my ability, my assumption is because those ingredients, the raw ingredients that you use in the bread, eggs, flour, stuff like that, come from things that are naturally found. And again, I'm not a legal person, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, so don't take me at my word, do your own research, but this is, I'm explaining it to you the way I understand it. The ingredients that go into semaglutide are available to anyone, well, any pharmacist. I mean, I can't get them. Wouldn't that be funny though, if I was like making semaglutide in my basement? But I'm not, because I can't get those ingredients because I don't have the qualifications. So Novo or other clinic, other medication companies, they buy these ingredients and they make their medication and they patent it because it's how they put it together, how they put it in their little pens and then market it and get FDA approval. And yes, Novo is FDA approved where compound pharmacies generally are not FDA approved. And the thing about FDA approval is that it costs a lot of money. So to go, companies like Novo have that backing compound pharmacies are small and don't have that backing. However, they still have to reach out and get the raw ingredients. So depending on the compound pharmacy, and you should absolutely research any compound pharmacy you're going to use. If that compounding pharmacy is reaching out and getting FDA approved ingredients, or F I should say FDA regulated ingredients, you're going to be safe because they're FDA regulated. They just, as a compound pharmacy, without that kind of backing, they can't get FDA approval. And that's okay if they're FDA regulated. That's my viewpoint. You may feel differently. You may feel like you could only go with an FDA approved drug through a big pharma company and that's okay. 
we all make decisions about our bodies that we have to live with. So that's how they got around making it. They didn't have to get the ingredients from Novo. They can get the ingredients. They can source the ingredients, the same ingredients that Novo sourced. Okay, but that doesn't explain how it's legal. So I'm not fully versed in how or why it's legal, except that from what I'm understanding, because they add an additional ingredient, like if I'm making bread and you're making bread, our breads, maybe I don't want to make the exact same bread as you, so I add rosemary to my bread, and now I'm making like a crusty rosemary bread. That's a little different than the bread you're making. It's still bread. It still tastes good, and it's still not going to kill us, but um, it's still bread. Same recipe, except I added the rosemary. Well, the compounding pharmacy at Ivim, they are, that Ivim is using, they are adding B12, thus making their medication just a little different and kind of getting around that patent. That being said, patent um, or legality of whether or not it's legal to do that doesn't even matter right now because there are policies in place. And I don't have that information, but the person I tagged on TikTok, she actually talks about, she gives you the specifics in her videos, and I really do implore you to go check them out. That, those, in, that, um, there are policies that say when a company like Novo or Eli Lilly or whoever it is that makes the medication, in this case it's Novo, when they can't make it and they can't provide it to their, their people who need it, compounding pharmacies are actually encouraged to make these medications, thus making it legal. So what does that mean once Novo is able to keep up with the demand? That's a question I can't answer and I have no idea. See, full disclosure, I don't know everything. And in fact, I know that I'm not explaining this terrifically, but I am explaining it to the best of my ability. And from that, what I wanna say is please, if you are tagging me in doctor's posts about compound pharmacies, please stop. Because all that does is create animosity between people who don't need to have animosity toward each other. It pins us against each other and I have no problem with these doctors. They're trying to do their thing. And I, I'm proud of them for that because they're helping overweight people get healthy. And I have no complaints about that. And their opinion and their viewpoint on the compound pharmacy situation is just that their opinion and their viewpoint, and they're entitled to it. I hope I've answered all your questions. And um, as I get more information as far as once Wagovi becomes available again, will they still be allowed to make some eglatide? I'll let you know because I'm curious about that too. Um, just to add though, I am being sponsored by iBeam. I do not want to mislead anybody. So why am I promoting it? Am I promoting it because I get a commission? No. I'm promoting it because I am so grateful that they are bringing medication to more people that would originally have access to it. $400 is a lot cheaper than $4,000, uh, $1,400, sorry, not $4,000, $1,400. So yeah, there'll still be people who can't afford it, but there'll be a lot more people who can. And one of the things that I've always felt bad about since starting my journey and, and sharing it is the people who just can't get it and want it so bad. So this makes me happy to be able to share with you guys a way to get it at a more, more affordable rate. And I am on Instagram, I am on TikTok, and I'm on YouTube. I am Call Me Tara J across all boards, even on Snapchat. So feel free to add me on all your social medias and say hi. Have a great day, and I'll be back with an update soon.